Good morning guys! It's Primrose here and welcome back. So today it's going to be a plant video. I just woke up and it's a bright sunny day. Don't you just love watching your house plants bathe in sunlight? So this is a south facing window. And um, I apologize, it's looking a bit messy. This area here needs a bit of cleaning. I have some philodendron uh, hastatum and um, <clears throat> a Rapidophora tetrasperma cuttings that I wanted to show you later. But first, let's take a look at these flowers here. This is from my angel wing begonia and they are almost saying goodbye so i totally uh, neglected this plant in the summer it wasn't getting enough water and i have lost a bunch of leaves and that is why the bottom part is looking so bare so i might have to cut the top growth propagate it and put it back in the same pot just to make it look a little bit bushy and uh, if you if you can remember this plant from my unboxing video not long ago, this is my Anthurium clarinervium, and I must be doing the right thing here because I am getting a new stalk. I'm not just sure if it's going to be another leaf or a flower, but either way, I'm happy. And um, I really have to do something about these watermarks and I believe a lemon juice would be very effective and I'll do that later. So let's take a look at these cuttings here. So I have two lots here. It's because they all started in a tap water, in water. Uh, I was trying to root them in water and two weeks later, nothing was happening. And some of the hastatum actually, some of the leaves, the old leaves turned yellow and fell off. And I panicked a little bit because these plants are still a little bit on the rare side, at least uh, from where I am. I'm in the UK. These plants are not easy to find. You cannot find them in a garden center and I've ordered mine from a plant shop online which is based in the Netherlands. And also these plants are still a little bit on the pricey side. So I panicked a little bit when I was not getting any uh, signs of growth. So that's why I've decided to split the cuttings into two and um, tried to propagate it in moss. And so, so far I'm seeing good results. And I still have half in water, but um, instead of just using tap water, I started to use warm water every morning. I throw out the old water and put in warm water and I get great results with that as well. So let's take th these cuttings out of the water. And I just feel the need of doing this today because of the roots. As you can see, these, cutting, these cuttings needs uh, to be in soil. So this has been in warm water propagation for about two weeks now and as you can see this this was really bare because the old leaves just fell off and look at that the roots is um the root is not as big and visible like from the rapidophora tetrasperma we are so used to propagating both us in water and we always get great results. But um, 
these Rapidophora and um, Hastatum, I find them a little bit difficult to propagate. And um, that is why I will not encourage um, for this plant to be propagated in the winter season. Because with the scandens, with philodendron scandens and the philodendron pinatum, I had no problem propagating them in just tap water. But these ones, um, they're not as easy. So look at that, guys. I may ha have to cut this and get more from this piece here. And it's pushing out a new leaf as well so this needs to be in soil now so that's two weeks worth of roots from uh, warm water propagation so I really encourage or uh, recommend warm water propagation just simply change the water into warm water each morning if you can so those are the ones from so unlike the trust the tetris perma this has statum it's got like a finer um roots so that's a new growth already so let's take uh, a look at those cuttings in moss so the only thing that I don't like about the uh, moss propagation is that you have to take it out of the moss every now and then to just to, you know, have a peek and see what's going on down there. But with warm water, it's just easy. Just lift it up and you can see everything right away. So this one is the... Rapidophora tetrasperma. So what I did with this one, you have to be very careful that the um, moss is not soggy. Just make sure it's moist and uh, don't let it dry out completely. So I spread it with uh, warm water. As soon as I see that it starts to get dry, I spread it with warm water. So this, this is what I'm talking about. Since the roots are out and um, it's difficult. I do not want to break it. Let's find a cutting that's easy to pull out. So for example, this hastatum here. That's a new growth already, and it's been two weeks in moss. See, as you can see, uh, the hastatum is not really, a, a, it doesn't grow a lot of roots compared to the Rapidophora. And this is the, it's, oh, this one is, the growth is big already, as you can see that it is a new leaf from the Tetris Perma. So I would recommend moss propagation as well. It's not that difficult as long as you um, stay bit, just between a little bit dry and moist. Don't go soggy or don't go... Don't let the, mo the moss to get too dry. So that's the only downside. So those are the roots as you can see. That's the only downside. It's because you have to constantly pull it out. And you will risk damaging the roots while doing that. So far, I get good results in both warm water propagation and moss propagation. But I think um, 
if I would have to choose, I'll do warm water propagation now that I know because I just do not want to break any roots. And another thing that is in moss right now is my, I kind of like the look of this. So this has been in moss for two weeks now. And this is my Philodendron siluum. So this plant, I was not afraid to pull it out of the soil of its pot because this is not a very rare plant to find. I got this for five pounds in my local garden center. So I've had this plant for a year now and um, it was growing in like 60% potting soil and 40% perlite and yet it was not happy. Uh, it was giving me a lot of yellowing leaves. So that's why I've decided to um, do something a little bit different and see how it would react. So this is the driftwood that I used for growing my um, air plants. And this is just a terracotta underliner. And... Um, this moss here, they're just easy to replace if it needs to be replaced. But for now, it's been um, there for two weeks. It's still good. And as you can see, I don't see any signs of shock from the transplanting. So I think it's happy where it is. And um, this plant is the Siluum Super Atom which means this is a very compact version. The leaf stalk doesn't grow very long, so this is like a perfect plant for this project. And I actually like the look of it. And um, at the minute, it doesn't have any aerial roots, but when it does, I, I hope that it will latch itself onto this drift wood for stability. So, there's that. So, how do you think, how do you like it, guys? I just, I thought it's like a fun project to do. And, um, yeah. So, leave me a comment down below, guys. What do you think of this um, project here? Do, do you like it? And yeah, those are just the uh, roots. And um, so what I do for maintenance is I can still feed this plant because this moss absorbs water. So what I do is I spray it with warm water and I make sure that it stays moist but not soggy and I don't let it dry out completely so it doesn't require a really like special care I think it's just very basic just water and um yeah so that's it for this video today and I hope you enjoy this one and thank you guys so much for coming and watching my video and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.